today I'm, I'm going to focus on a number of things during my presentation, very briefly on green and just transitions and UNESCO priorities for technical vocational education, and then more on greening institutions and critical parameters to consider when we're planning to green our TVET institutions, and also how to measure impact and some points to um, conclude. So, the main purpose of this slide is to demonstrate that uh, we need a different pathways to achieve the same target. And the one on the left, I like very much because it shows them uh, that the world biocapacity is decreasing and also that we have two types of countries, developing countries that are sitting within these um, parameters. So, that means that the ecological footprint is good but their human development index is low. And we have developed countries here, human development index very high and ecological footprint very high. So for these two types of countries, they need different pathways to achieve greening of economies, sustainability, achieving sustainable development goals. So developed countries need to go down and developing need to go to the right. So everyone sits within um, world biocapacity and also have a high human development index. So if we look at the um, image on the right, just to visualize what we need to do, that relates to countries, institutions, individual people in terms of greening. And another point to highlight here, is just the definition of just and green transition. And ILO advocates this to a very high extent that greening process should be fair and inclusive because otherwise we will be leaving people behind. Um, okay. Slide, okay, yeah. And UNESCO priorities, just two words, uh, three priorities, and I highlighted the areas that relates to greening and inclusion. So you can see that this topic are really important, not only for GIZ, it's also important for UNESCO. And inclusive TVET, inclusive green TVET is um, important because of the several reasons. And I'm sure we all share this understanding. So I would not be talking about that, but just to highlight that there are a number of different reasons why do we need to think about inclusive and green TVET. So greening institutions, now the main point of my presentation. So this is a general approach. If we want to achieve change, we need to understand what do we want to do, then we need to plan, implement, and monitor. So any change, any educational reform probably consists of these four components. And it includes the clarification of the concept, identifying the scope, uh, making sure that we engage different number of people. Also, we develop our action plan, we deploy resources, we also delegate different tasks to different group of people, we monitor and um, assess the results. However, when we are talking about greening and sustainable development of the institutions, we can find more specific frameworks that we can apply and that can be very helpful in our work. So this one I like, developed by United Nations Environmental Project Program. And you can see that the areas that relates to teaching and research, environment and climate, people and society, administration and governance. And there are a lot of subtopics under each of these that we can address when we are planning for change, when we are planning for sustainable university or sustainable institution. When we're talking about um, TVET, there is a more specific guide and more specific framework that has been designed by uh, UNESCO Univoc, and we called it a green guide uh, that was uh, published in 2017, so quite a long time ago. And it identified the whole institutional approach for change. Then it includes five major areas where, do, where we need to achieve change. And also it includes a lot of helpful tools, examples, resources, as well as a monitoring and assessment framework. So when we're talking about greening vocational education at the institutional level, we are talking about greening campus, greening curriculum and training, greening research, greening uh, 
workplace and community and also greening institutional culture. So currently uh, Univoc uh, decided to uh, make to update this guide and so another area will be included that relates to capacity of teachers because we really need to develop the capacity of educators so they would be able to uh, address these areas of greening. So when I was thinking about this framework and the way we implemented it at our institution, there are at least two approaches. Top-down approach that includes um, establishing of the structures and initiatives and the bottom-up approaches. So in terms of um, top-down, our um, institution established eco-garden, established solar panels, established charges for the electric cars, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, however, it decides that it is not enough and we need to consider more seriously what shall we do to make our campus more sustainable. So uh, the university established a task force on um, this topic and then uh, the members of this task force brainstormed the ideas. And these ideas were related to energy efficiency, sustainable building, because now we're building a new um, structure on our campus and sustainable transportation, et cetera, et cetera. You can see here green procurement, monitoring, reporting. And then after we brainstormed these ideas, I was trying to structure them under the bigger areas so we can uh, see the coherence in terms of our approaches. So we moved from number one, brainstorming, into number two, structuring. And you can see that the areas that we discussed are really well structured on the environment and climate and administration, governance, teaching and research people and society. That was a top down and now the task force was established recently. So we brainstormed these ideas, we structured that and now we will be developing the action plan and different units at the university will be in charge of implementing that. Bottom up approaches, I believe that it is extremely important because we really need to change the culture and the mindset towards sustainability and towards greening. And the best way to do it is bottom up. So uh, this year I uh, led the student um, team and we have the specific student empowerment work scheme and different academics, they can apply for that and they lead the group of students to achieve particular objectives. So my team relates to green and inclusive action-based campus for sustainable future. And I have been working with a group of students, group of girls, and we are trying to achieve these things on our campus to make it a better place to engage community and students to engage our students in different activities, engage elderly and youth from low socioeconomic background and also raise awareness and share possible actions with the greening workplaces. So the first thing we did is designed a survey because we decided that we need to find out what students know about sustainability and what sort of behavior they have. So we recently received the ethics approval, so start collecting voices from the students. And this is the type of questions we ask, for example, way, well, which of the waste reduction practices are you engaged in at home? And we ask them to reply. Have the, you heard about the particular um, concepts? And uh, up till now, we realize that they haven't heard about green transition. They heard about sustainability. They heard about net zero carbon economy. And also the um, other set of questions were related to what type of activities uh, they would like to see on campus so we can raise their awareness. And this is, we have a very limited number of responses because we just started. And you can see, for example, that they never choose a vegetarian food and then you might think, why is it so? And of course, on our campus, there is not a lot of variety of vegetarian food. So now we are discussing, shall we include um, Green Monday? So every Monday we will have just vegetarian food and shall we open a different outlet and shall students do something about that? 
And then another one, the reuse of plastic bottles. You can see that a number of students, they never did that. Yes, and uh, some of students, of course, they do, but that demonstrates that still we have a big scope in terms of raising awareness and changing behavior of our students. And what is also interesting, we agreed with our colleagues in Australia, so they will be conducting the same survey with their students. And also now we are negotiating with our colleagues in Glasgow. So then we can compare the context. And I believe that probably in Europe, it would be a much higher awareness compared to what we have on campus here and now. And this is the type of activities that the students are uh, suggesting for us. For example, do it yourself activities in terms of recycling products, upcycling workshops, maybe change facilities, greening our campus, raise awareness through different um, conversations and organizing uh, environmental conversations on campus. So this is the type of activities they suggested. Also, we decided that we need to change our corporate um, gifts because usually our university just giving us notebooks or pens for the visitors on campus. So we decided to design a green candle. So we are using the used oil, cooking oil from our canteen and transform this into the candles. So the girls also designed the label to make sure that it is visible what it is. And uh, recently we had a um, symposium on our campus. So it was a corporate present for the presenters and participants. Also, we did this workshop recently for the students on campus, and this is to reuse coffee uh, and transform it into the body and face scrub. And students really enjoyed that. Firstly, they said they, it never occurred to them that it is possible to use waste and transform it into the products. Secondly, they said it's a very nice relaxing activity particularly if we consider the context of Hong Kong, when it is so academically oriented. So everything is about learning through remembering or maybe a bit of critical thinking, but um, uh, definitely not enough hands-on activities. So we will continue to organize that. And also, of course, during the workshops, we're discussing different concepts just to raise students' awareness and understanding. Also, we, of course, decided that we need to engage different stakeholders. So we organized recently, you can see the date symposium. Uh, and more than 50 people participated and the 11 speakers were presenting. It was supported by the Beijing office. And uh, within this symposium, we had two contests, one for the best um, idea for green social enterprise. So we asked them to specifically mention what sustainable goal they will um, address through their idea. And also we have a photo contest. We ask students to identify the problematic areas on our campus and then um, suggest their solutions. So this is the samples of the photos our students had identified. And you can see that waste management, food management is a big problem on our campus. We have a very limited number of recycling stations and everyone said it is so inconvenient for the students and particularly near the canteen, there is no recycling station. So everything just thrown away straight away. So, but we are thinking, of course, it's a big problem, but a, a bit um, limited perception of what do we mean by green campus. So we uh, had a round table discussion during the symposium. So we provided this framework for the students to broaden their perspective on what do we mean by green campus. And you can see that relates to sustainable building, energy efficiency, community engagement, water conservation, et cetera, et cetera. And so then we ask them to go on campus again and take photos or generate some ideas within this broader framework. And uh, then we have this contest and the first place was uh, the lights, lights in the dorms that we have on campus. They're always on. And the person said, we really need to put a sensors. So then it we really, it will be energy efficiency solution for our campus. It looks like a very simple thing. Of course, in many institutions that has been done, but not in this particular context. 
The next one relates to sustainable building for green campus. And the image here, you can see a school in Rajasthan. So it designed for the temperature 40 plus and uh, no air conditioning has been used in that building. So you can see it's a really interesting design and it is a sustainable green building there. So our second place suggests a lot of things that we can include into our new buildings that we are constructing on campus. And the third one was a community eco garden on campus. And they suggested that we only um, not only have some plants, but we actually grow fruits, vegetables, herbs, and also use this one in our canteens and promote the healthy habits and also foster a sense of community because we can work with two schools that are located on our campus. So sometimes it is difficult to transform these problematic areas into the social entrepreneurship ideas. So what we did, we asked students to analyze the real cause of the problems and the facts and then the solutions. And you can see that the problem tree analysis template, one example that relates to this eco garden, and then how the students transform it into the canvas for the social enterprise. So I was really happy because we had six teams that produce different ideas and now management of our university asked me to summarize it and put it back into the task force that we have. So I was thinking it is really great engagement of students into providing um, solutions on our campus. Also during symposium, we had different enterprises presenting the ideas and this, particularly these two, we can implement straight away. And so that's why I think it's really important to collaborate with industry. So this one using BSF uh, lava, to deal with waste. And you can see these insects, they can um, deal with the cook waste. And then you we can have a fertilizer, we can have feeds for fish, and also we can do some materials for construction. And um, there is also a very simple way how to transform uncooked um, food into enzyme, and then we can produce repellent and fertilizer. So the company is very happy to collaborate with us so we can establish this on campus. Another one idea, uh, you know that um, sometimes for a small and medium enterprise, it's a big challenge to assess the environmental and sustainable governance. And this particular company uh, provide the platform for the small medium enterprise to do that. And so then what our university can do is to ask our supply chain to actually do this self-assessment. And then we can have a green procurement with the companies that are sustainable. Uh, engagement with community, also an important aspect of our work. And we conducted them uh, workshops with ethnic minorities and refugees. So we're developing their green skills and uh, through the practical activities, also helping them to deal with waste and also to think about the social enterprise. So recently we finished the first round of um, uh, training and we had two great um, ideas from the contestants that we are now trying to develop into the real social enterprise. How to measure impact? So of course the most important um, consideration from my point of view is behavior change. So if we observe the behavior change, that means that we achieved the really important result. How we can do this through observations and survey. For example, now we are conducting the survey that can serve as a baseline and we can do the same after two years. In terms of observations, we know that there are a lot of waste everywhere, mixed waste, not um, recycled waste. So we can see what's happened later. Okay? Then increased awareness. And here we, again, there's so many things that we can measure. Um, for example, the results of competition. Are the students propose more complex solution? Are more people interested? Because we've had a limited interest in this contest and uh, many people outside university participated, but from the university, we had only seven submissions for the photo contest and two submissions for the social enterprise. 
So the result, if we have it next time and we have um, more participation, more people interested, that will indicate that uh, we really raised awareness among students. Then has sustainable development goals or any themes that relates to sustainable development been included into assessment? Because we know that the students really want to learn something if it is included in assessment. Then number of awareness campaign on campus, then student activism. How many clubs do we have that relates to environmental or sustainable issues? And also, of course, we need to use this green campus model in whatever form you prefer to establish targets, indicators, and um, then uh, the time also, how soon we would like to achieve this or that um, uh, target. And if you look at the greening TVET guide, we also have a measurement uh, framework at the end. And here I put the example of the greening campus. So you can see the areas and the way they suggest to measure it, the beginning stage and then progress from beginning to the stable and embedded change. So there are a variety of ways you can implement this. You just need to decide what will work better for you. Some institutions, they're setting up KPIs, some setting up some qualitative descriptors, some setting up quantitative. So it should be a team or a task force that will decide. And it, many different groups that exist on campus, they should be included in this task force. So then it would be a, a more uh, comprehensive um, measurement tool. So in summary, the European Sustainable Competence Framework identified these four areas as really important that should be addressed through education. And uh, you can see that um, through the examples that I gave to you today, we're trying to access some um, uh, fairness and uh, inclusion through our work with community. We are uh, uh, addressing problem framing because it is really important to identify problems and we are pushing students uh, gently into the direction so they can broaden their um, uh, understanding of sustainability of the campus so they can address uh, more area, identify more areas uh, where we need the improvement. And then collective actions, of course, and individual initiatives uh, and uh, thinking about positively about the future. So just to make sure that the youth feel that it is possible to achieve things, because if we're very gloomy about our future, then we really don't want to do a lot of things. So how to start? I think that it's really important to start with the definitions. What do we mean by our green sustainable campus? We need to draw some visionary images about that and objectives, and then also evaluate what's happening now on our campus. Then we need to apply a holistic approach and you can choose from several frameworks or develop your own. I think it is very important to engage students because they bring a lot of energy on campus. And so that can help to raise the awareness. Then the next two points really relates to greening of curriculum and pedagogical approaches. And I will do a short introduction for the breakout session that um, I am leading about this component because of the time limits during the main presentation. And then, of course, awareness campaign to academic and non-academic staff and university leaders and managers, because sometimes we assume that our managers are very well uh, informed about this, but very often it is not the case. So we really need to raise awareness among all members of our um, uh, groups in society and it is important to work with external stakeholders and we realize that um, when we are working with ethnic minorities and refugees we can work with them because we have a good relationship with NGOs when we want to find out some innovative solutions we are talking to the industry so it is really really important to engage different stakeholders <clears throat> 